you know, 14 years after since you retired, do you think things improved? Do you sort of like understand the criticism or, or, or how do you think things have been changing over the last, you know, few years? What we're seeing now is a guy that um, decided he wanted to start his own federation, but on the way to doing that, try to burn down everything that, that made him who he is. And of course, we're talking about Lee Thompson now. Um, he's trying to do his own thing. The problem with that is, is he's not looking at doing his own thing. He's looking at trying to tear down everything around him first so there's no more competition. That's not going to happen, number one. There's a character flaw in him because part of the things that were wrong as an athlete, part of the things that we can see that are wrong in the media, he was part and parcel to it. You know, we heard of some, some issues with uh, athletes' scores being changed and and, and uh, favoritism and uh, ruling with a heavy fist and, and a lot of things that were going on and a lot of that stuff was coming on in the state of Texas where he was the head judge. So he, people are, it's a free country, it's a free world. He's entitled to do what he wants. We wish him well. Um, would I follow someone with the character that he has? Absolutely not. I mean, all you have to do is look at someone's past to get a good indication of what the future is going to look like. And you build a house on sand, it's going to crumble. And, and the name calling that he's doing on the way out, he's talking about people he's worked alongside of for 10 years. He's broken bread, he spent the night with these guys, he's travels with these guys. So I don't particularly like the character assassination. He, he might have had some good concepts. Change is good, competition's good. The NPC's been able to compete with everybody. Um, and I have yet to hear anybody from the NPC say, don't go compete over here, don't go compete over there. The only thing I've heard is a bunch of negative stuff coming from this new federation, which is Inspire. And I'm not really inspired by what I'm hearing. For sure. Um, what is one thing today that you hate about the business of bodybuilding? When I started bodybuilding, bodybuilding was an art form. When you talked about Bob Parrish, he talked about an artist. When you talked about Lee Labrada, he talked about a physique artist. Frank Zane, Samir Banu, Muhammad McAway. These were the people I was coming behind. These people didn't have trainers, they didn't have dietitians, they didn't have gurus, um, they did their own work. So when you saw them on stage, you saw a reflection of what they built, what they did. And I went about the business of doing the same thing. What I don't like is the bodybuilder on stage who's competing in a show that his trainer picked out for him to compete in because his trainer thinks it's a better show for him to do. Um, on a diet that he doesn't understand, you have to ask the trainer what the guy's eating and why. He doesn't know how many calories he's taken. He just does what his trainer tells him to do. And the guru over here has him doing some special whatever. And he doesn't really know what it is but because the guru is taking care of it. You know, girlfriend or the wife is cooking all the food. I've got a choreographer over here working on my posing. And I just don't like all of that. I, I, when I see a bodybuilder, I don't see the body. I interview these guys. So this is the part that I get disenchanted with. I no longer see the effort in the art of posing because it's not scored, so why bother? You know, you see a lot of bodybuilders walk back and forth, five or six different music changes, begging for applause, holding the hand to the ear. When they relax, the stomach comes out, a lot of bloated stomachs. Uh, and then you interview these guys, and they don't have anything to say. They're not making a statement. They're not prepared for what happens after the show to promote and market themselves, because they have a sponsor deal, and it's easy money. Um, they have a clothing deal, um, so they wear their clothing, but they're not marketing themselves as products. And you don't hear adjectives like beautiful, classic, um, artistic, aesthetic. Those words are going the way of the eight track, the way of the phone book. They're just disappearing. You, you're talking about guys that are put together with body parts. Um, fewer and fewer classical physiques. And now we're at a place where our industry is hungry to bring that back. So let's find a spot in between bodybuilding and physique and look for those classic guys that don't look like they're all drugs, that aren't trying to be 300 pounds, that have control over their stomach where their presentation means something. So they're looking for that to come back. But I was part of that. I was a part of that era. I caught the tail end. And if you go back to pre-1995, you'll find literally every bodybuilder competing in the Olympia has a routine. The bar was raised that Flex is going to show up with a song and a routine. Kevin's going to have something done. Everyone had something. And my first introduction to big time bodybuilding was 1988 Mr. Olympia. I think Lee Lebrana did his best posing routine. Barry DeMay 
was a masterful poser to U2. Phil Hill was posing to Phantom of the Opera. It meant something where you hear the music and you can see the bodybuilder going through the movements. And now I couldn't even tell you what Phil Heath posed to this year at the Olympia. I don't know about, you know, there's a lot of background noise and Branch Warren came on. It's just very disenchanting. So I think that's what I, I miss. I miss the effort from the athlete to do the work himself, share the end result, and then give the fans something that they can take home and remember. I left the Mr. Olympia. I don't even remember what it was about. Interesting. But um, speaking of the size, you know, I know you mentioned that, you know, the kind of like the size is, is a factor now. People get too big, right? But do you think that like in their defense, when you go to a bodybuilding show, you want to see something out of this world, right? Something like you can't see anywhere else but on the stage. So do, do, you, do you think the audience and, and the consumers of bodybuilding, right, they actually demand that in a way? Do you, do you think it's, that's why the sport got to that level? No, I, I don't think I never would go to a show simply on the size factor to see freaks. I mean, I'm, I got into bodybuilding to see the best built men. The best built men aren't always the biggest. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for the little guy here, but you, know, you can't discount the fact that Muhammad McAway was five feet five and 160 pounds and was two time first runner up to Lee Haney. There are guys, they have pushed the envelope. So when everyone's pushing the envelope, Everyone's going to be bigger. Even Dexter Jackson was his, his all-time biggest, but he wasn't his best. Bigger's not always better. I mean, Phil Heath has got to be very careful about how much more he puts on because he can take away the, the lines and the thing that made him who he is, the crispness, the, the detail. Too much muscle can take you right out. Rami, the biggest guy on stage, needs to be 15 or 20 pounds lighter just to get the detail that's going to be needed to beat someone like Phil Heath. So... Yeah, you want to see freaks. They're there. I mean, I was competing against Nasser and, and Jean-Pierre Fuchs and, you know, some of the bigger guys. And Paul Dillette's about the biggest freak that you're going to see. Dorian Yates, arguably the, one of the bigger guys, and Ronnie Coleman, the biggest Mr. Olympia. It, it runs its course because there is a price to pay. And I've been to too many funerals of guys that played the size game. Nasser El is dead. Art Atwood, former national champion, is dead. Don Youngblood, a Masters Mr. Olympia winner in 2001, is dead. They're all cautionary tales to me when I see a person push the envelope in the name of size. Pushing that envelope, there's going to be a price to pay. And I wouldn't trade one day to be in Ronnie Coleman's shoes with those eight Sandow trophies to have the physical body that he has today. Because what made him is what broke him. You're talking back surgery. You're talking a fused vertebrae in the neck. You're talking torn tricep, torn quadricep, double hip replacement. There's a price to pay. So the, the, the lesson here is, is that bigger isn't better. Quality is better. That's where I got into bodybuilding. Yeah, I'm not the biggest. Those so 210 pounds. Yeah, I never won the Mr. Olympia, but neither did Rich Gaspar, Lila Brada, Flex Wheeler, or Kevin Lavroni are half the people that are in the bodybuilding hall of fame. But I will not trade my health to be number one. And then have a time in my life when I'm retired and I can't run outside and play with my kids. It's not worth it. So the lesson here is that while these guys are trying to be bigger and bigger and bigger, some of them are taking themselves out of contention. I don't have to name names, but if you play the size game, be mindful that condition and quality are, I think, even more important than quantity. Because I know a lot of big guys. A lot of big guys that will never make it to the Mr. Olympia stage. And there were a lot of big guys in the Mr. Olympia that didn't get looked at because the quality wasn't there. So it's a very thin line and you have to find that balance. Honestly, when, when you go to the zoo, you always want to look at the gorillas, right? The biggest, the strongest, the best. Same thing with the cars. You want to see the fastest, the slickest, the best of the best. And that's, that's what bodybuilding is. It's the best of the best. But then there are people that love it, but don't want to do it. That's why we have classic physique and men's physique. No matter what, people are always going to want to see the fastest runner, always want to see the strongest bodybuilder, the biggest bodybuilder. That's the attraction, you know.